Howdy folks! Uh, this is a new series I'm starting off. Uh, it's going to be geology and mining terminology, kind of 101, and some intermediate terminology as we move up through the process of explaining things. Uh, going to use some photos to show you some of the things that you might recognize, not recognize about. Oh, timbering, you'll see mines, um, vein systems, what they mean, what the minerals are. Um, I've gotten questions on both Facebook and YouTube regarding um, what are we looking at? Why is it important? Um, I've got these minerals in my backyard. They don't mean anything in my area. Why do they mean something where you're at? Um, so we'll kind of go over all that in time. But today we're going to start off really with why did I call it a major mine? Um, then I'll explain that. Um, I initially found well, this is a start off with what we got behind here. This is a general map of the claim right now, 40 acres, 1320 by 1320 on square. And this is kind of the main system that we have mapped up as of right now. Um, initially found this in, I will say November of 2015. Um, almost died that day. That was a bad road. The road that goes back through here is not made for anything more than a single ATV, not a side-by-side. -side. I took a truck back there. Um, thought I was gonna die. Anyway, so initially I found the pit down here, which I've got several videos of, the Green Mountain Pit down here. Um, didn't really know what I was looking at. Went back there again to check it out after I had a hunch on a rock that showed off that looked really good. Went back to the pit, checked it out. Um, got some ideas that this might be fairly significant. Um, didn't really know at first, though. Uh, so put a claim in on it. Uh, claimed it back in January. And then started kind of exploring the area. Um, boots on the ground, I found. Uh, half of your exploring for a claim is sitting behind a computer, researching. Um, the, the old saying is, the gold is where you found it, or where it's been found already. Okay, so we had that going. We know this is an old... Um, this is an old claim dating back turn of the century, we thought, give or take. Didn't know how any old it really was at the time, though. Um, so, we had an idea. We knew what we were kind of looking at. And I got a wild hair and decided um, to really start exploring a little bit more in there. Came back over here, this other spot. And I'm just, just walking around these hills one day after I got through claiming this first 20. Found another vein back here. One of my partners, Dan and I, did. We found a vein up here. We found some spots in here. All of a sudden, things start clicking. Maybe we've got something going here. Uh, came back, took, decided to dig this pit out. It's about, we actually don't know how deep it is now. Um, took some samples out of there. Found some incredibly dense arsenic pyrite. Um, something this big, just a ball of arsenic pyrite. I thought it was mica, honestly. It was so, I mean, arsenic pyrite looks like this, that kind of silvery glint. Um, but this one, the crystals were, were larger. I thought it was arsenic pyrite, so I didn't think anything, but I mean, I thought it was mica, I didn't think anything of it. So, that's the pit. Started looking around the pit a little bit. Found these two little 50 foot veins down here, the pair of them times two, the curve back in this way. Um, let me add this in north is this direction up here, um, almost directly. So we found these two little veins, found the vein on the, there's actually a vein on the outside of the pit that goes around it, doesn't touch it, curves up between it and the chimney, I think I've showed you on a previous video on the uh, exploring gold and copper deposits. That vein splits the pit and the chimney, curves up just south of, or you know, just to the south of it, then cuts up here and actually connects to what we were calling trend point vein. This was trend point, this was only a couple hundred feet. Well, we started putting, plotting some more maps, the things that I found on the mountainside. Um, there's a little bitty dig right in here that we called something. There was a spot we called um, Hot Beach. Um, long story. But we draw a line from trend point, the angle it took, all of a sudden it started intersecting within a couple feet of all these other little spots we were finding. Uh, we were finding malachite, we are finding uh, good chrysocolla. There was a mineralization stream here that nobody really explored. So we had mapped that out, went up to about 900 and some odd feet. I knew another one down here, 
um, that I mentioned, I think I'm calling it dead spot. It's about 30 foot long, crosses over. Interesting. Um, so we knew about this one, we knew about that one, we knew about that one. I had seen the indications of this thing on the surface. You can see it from quite a ways up. The, uh, at one point, I believe the outcrop's about five and a half foot tall. Stands out, really does, if you look in the right spot. So then, when I was actually claiming this that day, went back here, we're cutting across some really nasty brush back there. There's a wash that kind of runs back up through here. Um, wash is a, basically a drainage, no water in it. In Arizona, they only run usually during monsoon season or when we get a heavy rain, it'll kind of, this is a drainage system. Back in here though, it, something didn't look right. There's this little wash coming back here that's really steep and really ugly to walk up in just cat claw acacias and uh, thorn bushes and cactus. I think Saguaro is too cold up there. Uh, just a nasty area. Uh, something didn't look right. Just spidey sense was going off there. Anyway, I finished claiming it up. Um, wanted to show my girlfriend at the time, Megan, um, back here. So we walked back here one day, came up this way, came up a long way to here, and found the attic. And that was the original video, it was the attic, the, the major gold mine. Um, so I had a bad idea. I mean, we knew about this 990. We knew about all this. We knew we had something going on here. We had a lot of interesting geology going on. Um, a lot of good surface indications. We had, you know, this is a piece of iron stained quartz. Look at that. That's just, that's ugly. That's ugly. What's pretty, though, is the fact that this is good old quartz, gold bearing quartz rock. Iron looks beautiful to a prospector. So then we kind of, I got a, when we did this, found this, this, the attic, um, the portal, we knew there was some rock back here. I did, had a pretty good idea what was going on. And then got home and started looking at some surface indications and doing some things with Google Earth as far as zooming in, zooming out, pulling from, looking at some things. And when I named it, I realized we had 1300 foot there. What I didn't know was that at 225 foot into the mine is that this vein actually split off I hadn't mapped it yet, so I didn't know it split off. It went 200 foot off off this main vein. We don't know how long this one is. There's no surface indication of this vein. There's some outcropping here in between these two spots, but this vein, this outcrop, and this vein outcrop. There's something else going on up in here. And we don't know what yet. Um, it could be that the the dip and strike, well, the dip. This could be that vein from the surface dipping down into it. Although the angle is not right, uh, we know what the angle is inside the mine, it's about 65 degrees coming that direction. It only worked for us. Um, so we knew we had a lot of good things going on here. This is a lot of mineralization, and there's a lot more indications of, of mineralization within this area. Now, is it uh, Empeng, or is it a Tatona, or is it an Olympic Dam major, as in multi billions? No, 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 no. What this is, is a lot of dense. Uh, mineralization in a tight area that has exceptionally limited exploration. We've got one little pit, another little thing that you could dig out with two people in half a day up in here. We've got this 400 footer, well, yeah, 400 foot here would take the whole thing. That's it. And this 40 acres is nothing. There's another little mine up here though. So why get excited about it besides that? Well, if you had a little bit longer of a pointer <laughs> up in here and we're about where the I will be past the crown molding up there there are two more active mines that have been going for quite some time um, they from the best I've been able to, to kind of tease out from the owners they're about 400 to 500 foot deep these are shafts and one's an incline shaft up there top incline shaft up there this one's a straight shaft down um, the closest major mine to us that's no longer producing that went out, I think in the, went out in 38 or 39, is up here, which really is only about three quarter, maybe a mile away. That one went 400 foot. We've got mines down here, 100, uh, I think one's 115, and 85, I think the other one's 65 foot down here, real close. I mean, right down here off this 40 acres, basically down here. We've got another mine down here that I've been in. Actually, it's probably down here somewhere, another 40 back. Um, that one is about 75 foot deep. 
How deep is our mine? Eight foot. That winds that they've gone through is only eight foot deep. This pit, maybe 17 or 18. We never finished digging it out. It got too dang hot. We started more country on this. We don't know how deep this pit is, but not very. Um, so we started doing some numbers and realizing that if we, depending on what these veins end up doing, and if they hold decent enough gold that averages out to a certain dollar amount, that we were looking at some pretty, pretty solid uh, opportunities here. Not something that maybe, not something that a junior level, if you have your, your major gold producers like BHP Billiton, uh, Gold Core, Ashanti Asing, uh, Anglo Ashante, uh, Rio Tinto, major names. Then you have your second tier. Those are the juniors. Um, people or companies that are just about getting there, but they're still, they're producing hundreds of thousands of, of ounces per year. Um, then you kind of get to the small scale miners, people that are doing uh, thousand ounces a year. That's where we think we are in here. That's where we think we are in here. Um, the area um, still producing from years and years ago. There's a brand new mine up here a few miles. Um, it's a new mine on a patented claim. They just sunk a new shaft in the last two years. Pretty sizable um, concrete collar shaft not too long ago. Uh, so the area's producing. We know that there's been, oh, not too far up that way, about three miles, some very major mines found that produced 100,000 ounces plus um, that are pretty, they're well known in this particular area. So that's why we said major. There's a lot of things working here that bring us to kind of a potentially life-changing, um, exciting level of, of, of mine ability here. There's really a lot going on because these are all turning the same way. Knowing what we know about a porphyry deposit, what this is, we've got unknown here. This is the one that's just, the hose is off though. It's just going the wrong direction. Uh, these two go the wrong direction. There's turning weird. A lot of faulting maybe going on there. This one rolled the right way. Um, let's just say we don't know what is down 20 feet? We don't know what's down 50 feet. Um, what's down 500 feet? We have no idea. Um, a lot of that drilling we're going to do in the fall and the spring, that will kind of start answering something like, you know, what's down 40, 45. Um, that's about how far we can go down with the drill rig we've got. So we'll have some ideas in here what we're going to be working on. Plus we can shoot, you know, we start running off side veins here and start running side cores to have an idea what we're playing at. If there's anything else back in here that would be missing that these original miners missed. So when I say major, no mine starts off as a world-class mine. Um, this one I don't expect that to be. <laughs> no, there's just no way. Um, mining though is optimism. There's never been a pessimistic miner prospector at least. Uh, there might have been pessimistic miners working in the mine. Um, but you have to expect that the next time you blast the wall, the next time you crack a rock open, there's a rock that's worth a thousand bucks, two thousand bucks, or you hit a vein that's worth, that's going to run four or five ounces per ton for 150 feet or 300 feet down. You just don't know. Um, so that's kind of why I said major. Um, there's a lot of good indications, a lot of good possibility. Um, so we're ready to get after it. So we're still working on some paperwork with state and with the federal level everything kind of tied together. Um, this mine, the that it needs a lot of rehab work um, to make it legally um, up to the Mine Safety Health Administration levels of, of safety so we can start working in it really. So we got some work to do there. Don't know when we're actually gonna start being able to start mining it. Um, we've got a long, a lot of work to get from that at it, to get, to get rock out of that it to the road down here. It's gonna take some effort. I'm not gonna lie about that. Um, so, so the folks asked me why I say it, named it major. I had one gentleman that, um, not particularly nicely, said that I was trying to basically puff up the value of it to sell it. We're not selling this. Sorry, folks. This is my baby. This is our baby. I'm not going anywhere with this one. This is a fun one. Um, not intending for investors. Don't want any part of that. Uh, we'll go as we go. We have enough ore, we think, here to prove that if we need um, outside source funds, we'll worry about it then, but not now. Not looking for Patreons, not looking for GoFundMes. 
this is I'll start begging. I want to kind of want to share this because it's a learning experience for for us. Um, teaching experience, I always kind of like to teach as well, did in college a little bit. So it's kind of want to bring you along for the ride because this sort of thing, when I was eight or nine years old, was fascinating to me. Um, absolutely loved the idea of getting having owning a mine, being able to go underground and, and dig for gold. It's fascinating to me. So this is kind of like living a little bit of a dream here for me. Um, and I want to bring you along with it. So as we go through period six, we'll be kind of showing you step by step what we're doing. We'll get you up to speed on the terminology we use in mines, showing you examples of that from our explorations in other mines and this one. Um, now this one kind of boring as far as timbering. It's all pretty self-supporting ground so far. Um, but what we're going to do, um, why the geology is important, mineralization, um, testing, and then as we develop our system for going through producing the rock, uh, or producing the, the ore rather, and um, processing that into a final gold product, we'll bring you along for that. Um, it's it's a lot of steps. Just because you got good rock in the ground doesn't mean you have any money in the hand. Uh, that tends to be in a little bit of an outflow right now rather than an inflow. So hopefully you enjoy the ride. Um, we're excited about it exceptionally so uh, if it was if we had gotten maybe 10 foot deeper into this in the spring uh, we probably would be working in it right now it'd be cool enough to get in there and start doing the work on it right now it just we're not quite far enough it's a bit too hot right now uh, we're not pushing it and more this is more developmental work right now if we we're in production um, that'd probably be we'd be shooting this video in the mine itself but there we go, and I hope you enjoy the enjoy the ride with us. Uh, thanks. Uh, subscribe if you want to, um, like if you want to, leave comments, questions. Um, the question I have for you really is, um, really, um, is a pickle considered a vegetable still? Because really, it's not. Is it? I don't know. Pickles, vegetables. Question. One for the ages. Anyway, until next time, uh, we'll be starting off in the probably the general mine overview terminology and we'll move beyond that to some of the timbering and then we'll get into some more uh, advanced timbering knowledge uh, information specifically on square sets which are a unique marvel of engineering for mines and then we'll start going into some geology too with examples of the rocks that I have sitting under here right now. Thanks folks until next time. Bye-bye.